We've, we've done, we've addressed some of those things. Some of those things won't be able to be addressed until we get into the new stadium and, and we get that all done. I know Russ Pears anxiously have the countdown of the calendar on his thing until September 5th of next year. He's inside of 400 days and, and clearly is aware that that's a part of it. Uh, we've got to get the stadium ready for this year so we can be playable and make sure everybody has access to the places um, necessary for the game, um, obviously. Uh, and then uh, obviously we've got a lot of work to do in the off season as we prepare. So it's about a year and a half, two year journey in this thing. And uh, in terms of the, the facility piece of what we're, what we're talking about, um, I would ask that our fans stay involved in the process. Uh, we absolutely want to continue to involve the fans in the process of what we're doing on game day. And I think that you will see some some things. Uh, just to as give you an example of my old Kentucky home, where do you want to see it? Well, the, the in, input came back. They want to see it at the beginning of the game and at the end of the game, and we'll continue to do that. That's what the fans have asked. And I've had a lot of feedback from time to time about what that what that should look like. And and uh, so that's what the fans want, and that's what we're going to do. In the, in the process of doing that, we did some things like voting for the the. Uh, the bracket tournament kind of a run out uh, the, what the team runs out on the field to and the players pick some music and the fans voted and and uh, I'm sure you'll all recognize the song so <laughs> <laughs> don't know <laughs> don't know about that but uh, but it's been good but it's been good so I'm, I'm thankful that everybody um, has been participating in that and uh, looking forward to uh, continuing to work through the, the BBN initiative that we, we put in place, the BBN First initiative. Um, the SEC network, um, big news around that. Obviously, everybody's been paying attention to that. Uh, who has picked it up, who has not. Uh, the distribution on that has been outstanding um, through the league office. I'm thankful for all the efforts of the league and ESPN, but I'm most thankful for the fans. Our fans put significant pressure um, um, in the league, not just Kentucky fans, but in the league, put significant pressure on on distributors and said we want this network. It has a chance to be the most successful cable launch in the history of cable television, or a launch in, in the history of cable television, and, and that's exciting for our league. It's exciting for our programs. It gives us an opportunity to to showcase our programs across the country. Um, the distribution just on the outset, if everybody picked up, you're in that 90 million home range. That uh, clearly not everyone has got it just yet or picked it up just yet, but uh, that's what it's available to right now, and it's continuing to grow. I'm real excited about getting that cranked up, um, and that will launch August 14th um, from our league. Um, obviously, our basketball program will be one of the first live programming pieces on that from the Bahamas, and that will be exciting for our basketball program. So um, I want to thank our fans for their engagement in that process, and uh, I think it's an exciting time for, for the Southeastern Conference and for the University of Kentucky uh, to be a part of that. A really, really important piece as we, as we go forward. So looking forward to that. Uh, the Commonwealth Stadium renovation, um, touch on that just briefly. You hear what's going on outside. You can see what's going on. we got a lot of work to do. And as I said, Russ is heavy in the middle of all that. Russ Pair and doing a great job of trying to pull all the details together. It is a massive project, great undertaking to try and do some utility work and some steel work and get it all ready to go, clean it all up, play some games, continue construction. Then at the end of this season, obviously we'll get into it hot and heavy in terms of all the, the shelling out the rest of the stadium. Um, in that transition, there's a lot going on. A lot of places we can't get to, a lot of places we can't park. And there's some, there's going to be some consternation and some and there's going to be some, some angst a little bit in some of those pieces. Um, growth obviously can't always happen unless there's, there's some, uh, some, uh, some change in all that. And uh, it's hard. And sometimes that means we've got to move some folks and change some parking. We've still got the best parking of any school in the Southeastern Conference. There's no question about that. Um, it may move some folks around a little bit. It may change a few of our seating structures a little bit. But at the end of the day, we're going to have a better place to play football, a better place to represent um, the University of Kentucky. And, and I'm hoping we'll have everybody's patience and understanding. And we work our way through that. And we grow this thing the way we all want to. Um, with that said, uh, up on the screens to my uh, left and my right, you will see some pictures, some, some pictures of our new training center. Uh, we're closing down schematic design of that, so we're still in draft on a lot of that. And so you, those are the, the pictures that we have that sort of give you a, some kind of idea of what that looks like. And as you look at this, it will, it will be on the backside of the Nutter Indoor Center. 
um, over here off uh, as we go past uh, towards Alumni Drive, give you some kind of idea where that looks like. And we'll go over there with some practice fields and the training center. It's about 95,000, 95,000, 100,000 square feet in that zone um, for football. And, um, and that will give us an opportunity to do some really, really cool, unique things, tying this whole facility in one-stop shop our players in an area where they can get everything that they need for the University of Kentucky football in one area. So we're excited about that. We think that we'll finish up schematic design later on this fall, and then we'll be able to begin the, the process and, and get into the construction process. So I'm real excited about that and, um, and be able to move forward with that. So um, I hope that this gives people a little bit of a glimpse of what we've been trying to, trying to put together over the last, um, last few months. Um, I would like to refer people to the game day website. Uh, continue to go to the game day website if, if the media could continue to plug that in terms of places our fans can go to get up to date information on a regular basis with regards to traffic patterns, parking, um, things <clears throat> within the stadium structure that could change, not on a daily basis, but on, a, on an occasional basis based upon what's going on in the construction. Now, I would like to encourage them to make sure they continue to stay in touch with the game day website and, and look to that. So um, pay attention to that. Um, and then uh, the other thing I'd like to also address is just to thank uh, our coaches and our athletes from, for last year. Um, tonight, we're going to have a little get together with our staff tonight um, and the families tonight for all the folks that contributed to um, the best finish in our department's history um, in terms of national finish. We finished 11th in the country, five points out of the top 10, and we were third, the third ranked school in the SEC in terms of, of national finish for a total department. Um, and that doesn't come without a great effort from a lot of people, whether that was our coaching staff. And the things that they did to bring student athletes to this program, um, the student athletes' efforts. We had some teams that did some remarkable things and had a lot of fun. And uh, 18 of our 22 teams placed nationally um, and did a remarkable job. Um, and then our staff. And just the things that go into getting ready to play and doing all the things that we do, uh, whether it's the medical care, it's the academics, the things that are going on. Uh, we had the best academic year we've ever had. We had the best athletic year we've ever had. We've got to continue to grow on that. And my message to our athletes simply is don't stop. Don't stop. Uh, we've had a lot of fun. Uh, it was a good run last year. We did a lot of really good things, but don't stop. And so we want to keep going. And uh, so that's the message. But I, want to, I would be remiss if I didn't publicly say, um, really for the first time since June 30th and the end of our year, uh, thanks to our coaches and our athletes. Um, it was a lot of fun to watch, a lot of remarkable performances. Um, during the month of July, we had an opportunity to celebrate A.J. Reed and the five-time National Player of the Year. Um, you know, I don't know, there wasn't an award he didn't win. Probably one of the more remarkable uh, individual seasons in, the, in all of college sports. Um, I'm not sure that's, that's been done very often in terms of nationally. Um, and I think that some went a little under the radar um, for what he did. He uh, had a remarkable year and want to congratulate A.J. on all the things that he did nationally. So um, remarkable. Um, I would be, re I'd be a little remiss if, or a little uh, out of line if I started mentioning a bunch of other individual performances. We had a bunch of athletes do a remarkable job. But uh, I'd like to thank them for a, a great year and a great finish. So uh, that's really sort of where I'll, I'll end my comments. I will take some questions if you have any. And then uh, in, f conclude my warm-up act for Coach Stoops. So, anybody have any questions? Mitch, how do you judge success for football on the field? This well, I just think we got to. You know, I think we, we want to continue to make progress. Everybody's going to look in terms of W's and L's. That's that's the first place everybody goes, and that's a, a reasonable. You know, that's a reasonable expectation. We all want to win. Um, you know, we want to see our, our program make progress. We're going to have a lot of young guys on the field. We'll have a lot of freshmen and sophomores on the field, a lot of redshirt kids. And, um, and, there's, and that's a positive. I think you'll see growth out of them. Um, you know, I think that's um, – uh, we've always said it before. You'll know progress when you see it. Um, you'll see our, uh, us making less mistakes in, in, in certain areas, less penalties, less turnovers, gaining, getting more turnovers, um, you know, creating a different environment for our team, moving the ball, um, late game, making adjustments and doing things we needed to win some games. 
So hopefully we'll do that. Uh, but you, everyone wants to see it show up in W's and L's, and certainly we would too. You know, the goal is to get to postseason play and and to uh, to do that. That's always the goal in whatever we do. So, um, but I think we'll all recognize progress when we see it, and um, I I would anticipate that. I think we've got a, a good group of young, talented guys, and um, you know, a bunch of guys fighting for positions and in, in all across the board. And this is as much competition for position as I've seen since I've probably been at Kentucky. I mean, there's, there's depth in a lot of areas in terms of people. And now who will come out of that to, to take the jobs is, is yet to be seen. Mitch, with the, with the vote yesterday by the NCAA about the more autonomy for the mm -hmm. uh, conferences, mm -hmm. so there's some talk now about maybe the Power Five conferences only scheduling games against each other and not going outside that. Would you be in favor of that? No, I don't think. Yeah, I don't see that happening. I really don't. I, I, I don't. I don't think that'll happen. Um, I, I, I think we've got to, for the strength of the game of football, we're going to have to schedule other folks, and I think that's important. Um, but um, you know, I mean, uh, a lot of people are pointing to quote unquote the RPI, the strength of schedule stuff for for the playoff system. Our strength of schedule is plenty good in the SEC. Um, we're we're fine, and everybody is playing at least one other Big Five conference team so we've got nine on our schedule um, Alabama is always going to have nine maybe ten uh, Florida is going to have nine maybe ten so we're going to be fine and I think it's important for the growth of the game of football to make sure that you you continue to play other people and we don't we don't get so tight on 65 70 teams whatever I think that's important not to do that um, now that's my opinion whether that resonates across I don't know. I think it's important for the game of football not to do that. How about FCS teams? Do you foresee continuing to play? I think you got to. I think you have to. Um, I, I think that, you know, to play one FCS team a year is, is probably fair. Um, I think that's fair for them. It helps them sustain their programs. They need it for financial viability uh, to be able to maintain their programs. You know, we need it too, uh, to be honest with you. We can't afford to. You know, from a just a uh, sometimes from a injury perspective and a cost perspective, and there's lots of pieces that come into play when you play an FCS team, um, and and it's important that that uh, you know you weigh all that in there. I think you got to continue to play them. Commissioner Sly, Commissioner Sly said that said that uh, Lonnie, Lonnie. Commissioner Sly said uh, he's at the, at the present time he wants his favorite to keep him. A game schedule as far as the SEC is concerned. Mm -hmm. However, the caveat to that was that he he, want, he would like to see every team play <coughs> 10 uh, 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 BCS games. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it's going to be the further pressure to, to make that happen? Well, the, the, the ADs and the coaches have been pretty strong in, in being at eight in the league. And we've all agreed we're going to play at least one F, FBS or whatever you call it, Big Five kind of a game. Yeah, I understand what he wants. Um, <laughs> let me repeat: I'm good at eight and one. <laughs> so that you know, that'll be a discussion. I'm sure that'll get to be a discussion in the room. I mean, I you know, I, I think I think each program has to weigh in where it needs to be. For us to sit here and say we're at eight and playing two others, I'm not sure that's very smart for us right now. And you know, the reality of it is, can you get to the final four of the playoff system? playing eight and one out of our league does the strength of schedule it'll all come down to those kind of pieces in the computer and all that stuff does that get you to the final four people are going to, have to make their own decision I don't think that needs to be at the conference level or at the national level I think that needs to be at an institutional level we need to make the decisions as to where we fit in and if we misgauge where we fit in and all of a sudden we have this remarkable season our strength of schedule isn't quite what it needed to be and we miss out that's on us that's our fault but I don't think I don't think that, that that becomes a decision. The growth and the health of our program needs to be based on where we see it and where we think it needs to go. As a league, we don't want to damage the league because of our schedule. But I think as long as we're playing eight and we're playing one, I think that's strong. We've already talked about we, we work very closely with the league on our basketball schedules. Our, we've got our league basketball schedule, and they take a look at our non-conference basketball schedules to make sure that we're all within the framework of not just scheduling everybody in the bottom third of the RPI so we don't damage the rest of the league. We'll get to that spot. I'm fine with that. But I think at some point in time, it's an institutional decision as to where you want to live or where you feel like you can live. Oscar. 
the answer. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Mitch, is there anything firm as, as far as the future of the Ring of Honor and the new stadium? I had a call about that. Yeah, we're going to work our way through. We've got a, a whole package that in terms of graphics and what we're doing with um, traditions and those kind of things, and that is a piece of the construction package. So as we get through a lot of these bid packages and we make sure that where we are financially, we'll work our way through making sure that those traditions, we've got a group that we've worked with that's come in with designs and um, different ways to honor traditions and, and wayfinding signs that say this is where you go to get to your seats and all those pieces are included in one package. Um, so certainly that's a, a piece of, the other thing I want to find a way to do is our total University of Kentucky Hall of Fame, which we just, we're, we're going to announce that new class here very shortly. And uh, I want to make sure that we find a way to honor that group as well. We, we talk about the Ring of Honor, and that's just our football-specific folks. And we've got the folks that hang in the banners of, of Rupp Arena. But we've got a lot of other athletes that have contributed to this deal, too. And I want to make sure we find a way to find some way to honor the University of Kentucky Hall of Famers. We've got some really phenomenal folks. And, uh, and they, they need to find a spot where they're honored as well. So I'm not sure how we get all that done, um, but we're going to figure that out. So. Anything else for Mitch? Okay. Thanks for being here. Look forward to seeing you, and we'll see you in the stadium this fall. Okay. Very good. How's everybody doing? 
<laughs> uh, it's been a good couple days. It's been a good start. I'm very pleased with where we're at. Our players worked extremely hard. Uh, in the off season, this summer, uh, we're much improved. Um, you know, we're a deeper football team. I think our freshmen really help us uh, in that area. I think there's about 12 or 13 freshmen that'll play. Um, so we'll see. We'll see where it goes from there. But uh, I like the progress of the team, and I like where we're at. Mark, can you define the word pressure and how you define it today versus last year on this day? Uh, the pressure is all self-induced. You know, we. I really, you know, all coaches I think will tell you the same thing. We. We expect a lot of ourselves and of our teams, and, and a lot of that pressure is just uh, on you and what you expect of your team and your, your coaches and all that. You had a bad practice the other day. You were not in a good mood. How did they, how did they respond to that? They responded well, uh, just like I thought they would. I think, you know, as I've said, uh, I feel better about the leadership of this team, and, and I feel like they, they bounced back well yesterday and have a good attitude today. So we'll have a good work uh, this afternoon as well. Mark, those 12 to 13 freshmen you're talking about playing, mm -hmm. majority of them on offense or fairly well split between the two? It'll be uh, fairly well split. Um, a, a good majority of them will probably be offensive. Uh, you know, I think we have to play the receivers. You know, those those guys have been uh, really looked good. Um, you know, really all the all the freshman receivers uh, can help us. And uh, looking forward to having that depth. Uh, running backs as well. Uh, you know, we we're, we're, uh, feel good about the you know the depth of our running back position, but uh, but the freshmen could could help us there as well. A weekend. No, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. You know, obviously, as we get further and further in the camp, uh, things amp up a little bit. Scrimmages, uh, full pads, and, and all those things as we move forward here. So uh, we'll see how they respond to that. Are you happy with all the work all the quarterbacks did during the summer? Can you send into the summer to improve? Yeah, definitely. I, I've said it over and over. Whoever takes the, the first snap will be improved. Uh, the, the guys really uh, have done a nice job. We're better around them, and so I expect them to go out and have a good, you know, play well. Uh, I think we have good competition there. They're all doing some good things. They're they're not perfect, uh, but they're much improved. Mark, what do you think the biggest area of improvement in the issue? Well, as I've said, I think just our mentality of our team, the leadership of our team, in uh, accountability and dependability, all the little things. You know, it, it, it's a lot, as you know. There's a lot of positions uh, that, that, that go in the fielding a football team. And, uh, and uh, everybody needs to take care of their business. I think uh, we're a more reliable football team. They're, they're, uh, you know, mentally, we're just much tougher, much, uh, you know, much more leadership, um, you know, more accountable mentality. And, uh, and physically, we're better as well, and we're deeper, as I just said. Um, uh, you know, I think those are, those are the big things. Um, the, the little things, we always talk about the little things. And, and when you're dealing with so many guys, when you're dealing with 100 football players, the little things are big. Because, uh, you know, if we continue to do the little things well, then the big things won't be so big. Who, who went in the locker room and righted the ship for you guys after Wednesday? Do you know? I have a good idea, but I wasn't in the locker room, and, and I know as soon as I walked away, you know, I could tell some guys were in the meeting and or in the huddle, uh, talking to them. I'm not sure who it is. I, I have a good idea because I know who, who the leaders are on this team. I've discussed them before. And guys like Bud and guys like Jordan and guys like Z. Uh, so I would, I would expect those guys had a good talk. Mark, are you still giving all four quarterbacks equal reps, and if so, how long can you? Keep Maxwell has not been 100% yet. Max is still coming back off that shoulder surgery, so he has not gotten as many reps. He's been every other day to this point. So, so the other three have gotten equal reps. How long do you think you can keep doing equal before you try to? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, when when we have a decision, you know. I know Jacob Hyde was banged up in the spring, played a little bit in the spring, but where do you see him fitting in with your plans? Yeah. For the Jacob's uh, doing a very good job. He's a he's a 
great uh, young man, works extremely hard, does everything right. Uh, 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 I love his attitude. He's good to have on our football team. He's trying to earn his way to get on the field a little bit right now. We, we have a mixture of guys inside that are doing a nice job. He's in there. He's trying to get some reps. We'll see where it goes from there. There's a number of the players who talk about Jacob being one of the strongest guys on the mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's, um, you know, really proud. When Jacob got here, he, he needed to change his body a little bit. He was a little uh, too heavy and, and really changed his body. Uh, he thinned down for a while and then gained the weight back the right way. Uh, and he's very strong, as we talked about. And, uh, you know, he, he, he's, he's a very hard worker and a great young man. Uh, so. Mark, I know when you, when you came into the job, you had a plan idea of what you wanted to do after having been in the job for a year going into your second year have you had to tweak or change much of your original plan not really i mean we we always change as you know uh, with football um there's so much that goes into it schematically that we constantly i mean we that's why we stay here all day and night uh we we spend a lot of time schematically always changing um, as far as the overall plan of the program and where we're headed, no, we're staying the course, and uh, and I really love the direction of the program. You know, I've I've said that and uh, over and over. I, I feel like there's a, a great buy-in. Uh, I wasn't here for Mitch's press conference, but I'm sure um, you heard all the good things that are going on, and uh, and that makes us excited as a coaching staff, as a as a football team, our players, uh, our recruits. Uh, everybody feels the excitement that's going on right now. Uh, there's been a great buy-in uh, from the from the whole state, uh, and certainly from our administration. So that that definitely helps. What's what happened in this first week of, of camp that has it all changed? The What's that? Order to um, you with the quarterbacks from the way you saw it coming out of spring. You know. You know, it's hard to answer that. Uh, I'd. It's it's it is wide open, Kyle. It, it is wide open, um, it, and I think they all. Um, somebody needs to to take the reins and be the clear cut winner of this job, and and they need to do that. We're giving them plenty of opportunity. Somebody needs to take it and run with it. And as we move forward, and as the pressure of practice amps up in the next week, I mean, somebody asked me a timeline. I'm not going to put a timeline on it, but sure, in the next three, four, five, seven days, we, we absolutely would love to have somebody take the reins of that position and say, that's my spot. And uh, right now, it's just too even. And, it, and, and I've said it before, it'd be too reckless just to make a decision because I want to make a decision and not answer these questions. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. And it's not fair to the players. It's not fair to our team. It's not fair to the future of our program. It's a very important decision, but uh, in, in sure we'd like to have that done, but, uh, but it's not. So we'll see how it plays out. I'm, I'm confident we will play better at that position, regardless of who's in there. been very impressed with Matt um, you know you've heard some I've heard some of the comments of some of our players talking about it he's he's so big but he's so athletic for his size he's a very unique player you you uh, you know guys like that don't come around all the time and uh, he's got a bright future because he picks up on things well uh, he's extremely athletic for his size and, uh, you know, so I'm very excited about Matt and his future. He needs to continue to work to get into shape so he can play at a high level in this conference. And uh, no matter what position you're playing, that's hard to do as a freshman. But, uh, but I really uh, like where he's at, and I anticipate him playing in the first game and, and being ready to go. Is the kick returning job Killens to lose? Uh, I'd lo- I, I think kick, kick returning off the kickoffs, we have uh, – uh, uh, plenty of options there. Uh, uh, the punt return is the one that uh, sticks out to me that's probably you're talking about. And that's, uh, yes, uh, I would love to see Ryan do it. He's been very reliable so far in camp. He's done a very nice job. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see him win that job. Well, Darius, it, it's a shame what happened to Darius. He, he, uh, 
Let me just start with saying the, the whole freshman class, you know, a lot's been talked about and written and everything, but I'm going to tell you, after being here for four practices, uh, they're everything we thought they were going to be and more. A, a great group, really talented players, really have a good feel for the game. And uh, so I'm really disappointed in Darius. He is a great football player and will be once he gets healed up. Um, and with the, the safety position, you know, two spots a year ago that, that I didn't feel like we played very well in the will linebacker position in the free safety. And A.J. Stamps comes in right away, and he's been here since the spring. But he's a guy that you haven't seen play yet in a game. Uh, besides the spring game. So uh, he's a guy that helps fill that, a, a big void right there because I just love the way he's playing. So that helps us uh, right there. Um, the guys that we have are getting better. A guy like Marcus McWilson is much improved from a year ago. That'll help us uh, as well. So um, I feel a lot better about that position. And uh, what was the second part of that? That was it. That was it. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to talk about the Will position with Flanagan. And Ryan Flanagan just got here and uh, really impressed with him. We needed him. We talked about the depth at linebacker. He's a guy that will definitely help us. Uh, we, we love the way he's picking things up and the way he's playing. He came in in really good shape, which you always worry about because you haven't seen him all summer. And I uh, love the way he's playing. And, 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 and he, he and Khalid you know, will continue to battle at that position. Uh, uh, you know, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm Middleton sorry. And Tub -Tub. Middleton and Tubman, I absolutely love them. They're going to be very good football players. That whole freshman D-line group, um, they are some big guys, very big and very athletic. Uh, Middleton, um, Adrian, we'll, we'll see where he goes. He may need the red shirt, but he is an athletic big guy. He put on a lot of weight. Uh, between the end of his senior year and right now. So we need to uh, restructure some of that weight, but, uh, but he's very uh, athletic and very good football player. He's going to have a good future. And Tubman, same way. He's coming off sh shoulder surgery, and uh, we got to be cautious with him right now. Uh, I don't want to bang him up and, and re-injure uh, that shoulder, but he is uh, – very good football player, very good looking guy. Our, our team really looks at him and, and, you know, everybody wants to compare him. He looks a little bit like Bud did just maybe a year ago. Uh, and, and he gained an awful lot of weight between his uh, end of his senior year and right now. But uh, Lloyd is a, a very big, uh, good looking athletic guy that has a bright future. You mentioned redshirting. At SEC Media Days, Derek Mason said, if they indeed, we don't believe in redshirting. Mm -hmm. What's your position on it with a team so young and in need of talent? Well, I just, it, it, and that's, you know, after four days, I feel like there's 12 or 13 guys that have a good chance of playing as a freshman. The other 12 or 13, for me and for us, I'm not saying anything about what, what he does, but for us, it, it would uh, not make a lot of sense for us to play them if they're not going to have an impact where maybe five years down the road, they're going to have a big impact. So, and, and some guys just physically need it. Some guys are coming off injury, you, you know, things like that. So uh, the guys that we redshirted a year ago, uh, guys like Ramsey Myers, has a, you know, he's probably going to start at right guard. You know, so that was a good red shirt. He had an opportunity to, to, to get acclimated, to get bigger, to get stronger. It really helped him. It really helped Reggie Mint. So, um, you know, it just depends. I don't ever put it where we're definitely going to play a guy or we're definitely going to redshirt him. We'll see how it plays out. Mark, where, where are you right now as far as where you want to be as a, from a physical standpoint as a football team? Both not only in the size of weight, but from a physical nature of playing the game in that way. Improved. Improved. Um, <coughs> I don't know if anybody will ever tell you, you know, any head coach will sit up here and say we're as physical as we want to be. You always want to be uh, more physical. Uh, so it's like that old saying there, can't have too much money or you know, all that stuff or too much fun, right? So, uh, <laughs> so, so uh, but, you know, we always want to be more physical. Uh, I like the look of our team. I love the way, um, you know, the new bodies in our program look. And, uh, and, you know, we need to continue to develop those guys. But we're, we're bigger and more physical. How much Mark? use do you think those freshman corners are going to I mean, are the two guys that you've seen playing? Um, 
I, I'm not sure yet about the corner position. Um, uh, Tucker, I'd like to, uh, we love him. Uh, physically, he may, it would help him probably to have a year. But if we need him, we're going to play him. Um, so we'll see. But I, I really like the way he's playing. So uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. He's not one that we definitely need to count on right now. What about, is Randolph in a corner? Is he he's playing our nickel, and he's going to play. And, uh, he, yeah, he'll play. Mm -hmm. I'm very impressed with him. He's a, he's a guy that we thought all along um, that was a little like Blake McLean, and he is. He, he's, he's all that. He's a guy that we feel like you, if we need him to play at nickel, which you, you know you've heard me talk about, it's a very unique position. It's not easy. Uh, you got to have instincts and, and a lot of ability. And I love the way he's playing there. He could play safety or he could play corner. Good. All the positive results on the recruiting side. How big is this season to take in particular on the results side, you know, having all that translate on the field? It's, it's always important on the results side. Um, we are always trying to build our program, but y y the bottom line is winning and losing games. So we want to win games. It's extremely important uh, for a lot of reasons. We have a lot of great momentum uh, here uh, in football right now, and we need to keep, keep that. You know, we have uh, all the – the great things, like I said, I didn't listen to Mitch, but the, the construction and the, and the, uh, you know, the the complex that we're building, the recruiting's going well, and you know, aside from all that, our players that are here, the seniors that are here, that have, uh, you know, paid the price and really turned the corner and went through a coaching change and done all the things necessary to be great leaders and, and great young men, they deserve to win. Mark, statistically, in your your second season as a coordinator at the, the two other places. You guys really improved. Do you expect to see that sort of improvement in a place like this? I do. Um, I know just from the first day of practice and first four days, um, I like where we're at defensively. Uh, you know, we're, we haven't arrived yet or anything like that, uh, but uh, but but I see drastic improvement, and a lot of it comes from confidence and communication and uh, understanding what's going on. We got time for two more. Larry's one. Mm -hmm. okay. Mark, when you talk about the true freshman receivers, how they're different, they've got to play. Is that, are they better than what you thought, or is your need for them up there so much that they're going to play that it's got to take? Um, a little combination of both. I think we need them, and uh, and uh, a couple of them have, you know, early signs show that they're going to deserve to play. So, uh, you know, Dorian Baker is just a, 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 a awfully. Uh, a big, strong, good-looking receiver that's really impressed us, uh, you know, so far in camp. Um, Garrett Johnson is a guy that uh, definitely, you know, from things we heard all summer from just the quarterbacks out there, they've loved him all summer. He's very polished, very skilled receiver. Um, you know, he's going to help us. Blake Bone is a very big receiver with great ball skills that's uh, working his way in there. And Thaddeus, you know, Thaddeus was here in the spring, but Thaddeus is a guy that really you saw, I saw dr drastic improvement in him. Going back from last spring, what he did all summer, and coming in the first four days, I'm really impressed with what Thaddeus has done. Uh, Mark, you talked about how you want a quarterback to take the reins, have a mm. competition in the backfield. It, it, it's, it's not as big a deal to you or to us at that position because you need to play so many running backs. You know, who takes the first snap really isn't a big deal to a football team. I'm sure it is to those players and we'll see what happens and uh and and but uh but they're gonna they're gonna all play. And you need them to play. It's a long season. So uh that's why it's not as big a issue. You know, maybe we'll start the game with three tailbacks, you never know. So <laughs> so yeah. Neil yeah. talked about being impressed with the red shirt freshman uh, lineman. Yeah. Um, could you talk about that? Yeah, um, I, I feel very good about uh, Kyle Meadows. Uh, he's a guy that really uh, used the, the red shirt year uh, like he needed to, uh, got acclimated to school, and uh, got a lot bigger, a lot stronger, and really did a good job. And Ramsey Myers, the same thing. You know, the, the benefit for those guys, if they do redshirt, is uh, they're on a totally different weightlifting plan than the rest of the guys. And guys like that, that's where you see the great benefit. 
because all weekend, well, the guys are traveling and going to nice hotels and eating good meals. Those dudes are in the weight room banging it and uh, and and really lifting and putting on that weight. And they're at a totally different weightlifting program than the rest of the crew. So uh, uh, that that was really important for us to redshirt those guys a year ago. And with that, the, this freshman O line class the same way. You know, fortunately. We should not be in a situation where we need to use them this year. Uh, I hope it stays that way. Um, but very talented group. And I think a year from now, they'll really be what you're looking for. They really have great size. Uh, uh, some, two of them are coming off of an injury, so it's good to, to just let them heal up and lift and get bigger and stronger. Uh, but, uh, but Croc is a guy that he could possibly work his way into the mix this year if we needed him. Uh, but uh, hopefully we could redshirt him. But uh, we'll see. He's been impressive as well. So he's in the mix a little bit. All right. Thank you. Uh, excited to be here again. You know, looking forward to the season. Outside the players, you are my favorite people <laughs> to be around. Is that what your kids are? That's right. That's right. I'm always positive. That's right. DJ, you and Mark have talked about Matt Elam being athletic. What does athletic mean to someone that big? Well, well, um, imagine a big train, okay, <laughs> going fast <laughs> down the track. Well, when, when you see someone that big, you just don't expect to see an explosion and, and um, something so quick off the ball. And he has that. I don't know. I mean, he, uh, he definitely has a lot of natural talent. But uh, he had some good high school coaches, and he went through a good program. Have you been around the guy in, in your career or playing or coaching to have that combination of both the size and the speed? Never that big. I, uh, he's probably the biggest player. Um, I've ever been associated with. So, um, you know, we, Coach Stoops and I were at Florida State together. We were at Miami together, and we had some good defensive tackles, that, but uh, never won that big. Why do you think teams get so much better statistically under the Stoops and you, you know, on that second year? Well, the first year you go in and um, everything's new to them. Uh, every time they see something, it's the first time they see it. And then the second year, you got a chance to, uh, hey, I've been there. I've seen that. I know what I'm supposed to do. So you see improvement. DJ, how does J.D. Harmon? He looks good. He's great size for a corner. He's got great change of direction, good speed. It's, it's, it's great to have him back, back out there this season. Uh, he's got a, uh, a bright future. When we get to this, do you have any a better idea of your It's tough to tell, you know, we've only had one shoulder padded practice, you know, and at that position, so much is based on uh, the physicality. So we really haven't seen them hit each other much, so it's tough to tell. Which areas of the defense have you seen most improvement since the spring? Um, most improvement since the spring? Uh, I, I think that um, we're, we're better in the secondary. We're better in the secondary, and uh, that comes with experience. And um, I think that comes with just more reps as well. What do you ask from a, a, a guy like Ashley Lowry, senior, to make a lot of improvements in that secondary board? Well, Ashley's a senior. He's got to be a leader. You know, a lot of those same uh, qualities that we got from Avery last year, he has to have those in the secondary. And then on top of that, you know, his play has got to be very, very good, you know. That safety position is critical in our defense, and so he's got to communicate. He's got to get guys lined up, and then he has to make plays. Your impressions of Flanagan so far? Very athletic. Um, picks up the defense quick. Um, you know, like I said, we've only had one shoulder padded practice, so I don't know yet who's going to hit who. So it's tough to tell from that standpoint, but I've been impressed with him. You said you quizzed him. You'd call him and quiz him a little bit when he wasn't here and trying to make sure that and you talked about that a little bit. What were, how do those cover when you can't sit with a guy and watch film, uh, and you can't work with him physically? How do, how do you, how do you exactly do that over the phone? Well, first thing is I learned what his defense was, and then I tried to that he knew in junior college, and then I tried to translate it. Okay, so that it would it would go quicker in his mind. 
to what we were doing. But the good thing is, is he's not a high school kid. He's played two years of college football. You know, and that's what you get with a junior college player. So he's a little more advanced in understanding the game than a high school kid would be. How do you do on those quizzes? Very good. <laughs> Very good. DJ, what, what do you know about this job now that you didn't know when you were sick up here a year ago? I didn't know the media was going to be so good. <laughs> you know, I didn't realize how talented the media was. So you learned how to suck up? Is that <laughs> <laughs> um, I tell you what, um, what I didn't know was how passionate the fan base is about football. You know, I knew the fan base was passionate about basketball, but I didn't know how passionate they were about football. And it's been very impressive and very exciting to see that. And Nico? Yes. Um, I think they have a lot of potential. I've been very impressed with both those guys. As you know, last year I didn't have a freshman linebacker. You know, we didn't sign a linebacker in that class last year. So this is the first freshman class that I've had at linebacker. And uh, I I've been very impressed with those guys. They're athletic. They, uh, they're, they're into it. You know, they're intense, which you got to be at that position. Again, it's, I, it's too early to tell for those positions. You know, sometimes in the skill positions, you can tell more without pads. But um, at the line and linebacker, it's tough to tell when you haven't hit anybody yet. DJ, how much do you hope to get Hatcher on the field? How creative do you hope to be maybe in doing that? I hope to get him on the field as, as much as I can. But, you know, most of that is up to him, you know, and, and um, you know, where his play's at. And, and that's for everybody on the team. You know what I mean? But uh, he's got a talent that I want to use, and we're going to do everything we can to get him on the field and use him. What about uh, the guys that are going to be sophomores now that played as true freshmen last year? How should they improve? Well, like I've said before, you know, those guys in the secondary took their lumps having to go out there and play in the SEC as true freshmen. But, you know, it, it, it really matured them. And um, so now going into this training camp, uh, I feel much better about them, and they feel more confident in what they're doing having been there. Coach, with a little bit of lack of depth at linebackers, do you see it as a better approach to be more volatile with your defenses or try to stick to a solid base and work from there with that? Well, the, ultimately, you have to be great at fundamentally. You have to, you have to be great uh, with your fundamentals. So you need to harp on that in whatever scheme you choose to run. But we're a multiple defense. You know, we, we run uh, a lot of different uh, schemes. We run a lot of different looks. And we're going to continue to do that. Did you have to feel about the well, we, you know, we lost um, two guys that uh, were critical in our defense last year, but uh, Mike Douglas, by the end of the year last year, was playing well, and, uh, and he's back. And then we redshirted uh, three defensive tackles last year in Melvin Lewis, Jacob Hyde, and Reggie Ment. And so they just got bigger, stronger, and faster. So they're much more mature than they were last year. And then with the addition of our freshmen, too, I think we'll be in good shape. Well, um, are you going good on good? I don't even know that yet, but are you? No, we've gone good on good, and you know, in seven on seven, we've uh, we've had to battle those guys, and you know, it, some of the usual suspects are good over there, but then some of the freshmen that I've that have caught my eye are like Dorian Baker, um, Garrett Johnson. I think those guys are playing well. Who's the starting quarterback? <laughs> Neil Brown. <laughs> Uh, his tempo is, uh, I mean, yes, it's improved. It's always fast. It's always fast, and it has improved. Anything else you got? All right, thanks. Guys. Thank you. Good crowd. How's everybody doing? I know there's a little golf tournament going on down the road, so appreciate y'all being here. We've had uh, had four practices in the books. Uh, yesterday was a little bit slower pace. Uh, guys finished up finals. Excited about the group. I uh, feel much more. 
I, I feel better. I feel more excited. Um, I like where we're at, especially compared to where we were a year ago. And uh, I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about the quarterbacks. Really like how they're how they're preparing, how they're performing so far. Um, really, the next five seven days will tell a lot. And uh, we we've done a little bit of good on good work, uh, but we've been we've been real careful because our guys are going through finals. And we uh, Coach Corum did a did a study and really found out that a lot of injuries hurt, occur during during finals week. So we've been we've been really careful with our guys. So now we're going to pick up starting this afternoon. Do a lot of good on good where the quarterbacks put them in some different situations. So I think, I hope over the next five or seven days that uh, one of those guys is going to stop st uh, stand out. I think Coach Stoops touched base on that. Probably, you can ask, I probably won't have much else to say about those guys other, other than if you want to ask about them individually, but I probably won't have anything else to say about where we're at in the position. Um, I'm, I'm about to the point where uh, I'm tired of asking, answering a question, and a lot of y'all are tired of asking it. So uh, with that, we'll open up questions. <laughs> <laughs> Starts off, Lonnie. How have you been in a situation where uh, you had to overlap with summer school and players had to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning or yeah. get, uh, uh, you know, practice at 6? One, one other time. We did it my last year, or, uh, yeah, the last year at Texas Tech. And to be honest, you've got a lot of time. I think you have 30 practices now. So it's really, it's really not that big a deal. It's, um, we, were real, uh, we were real conscious about giving our guys academic time. Because coaches are always in a hurry, you know. It's just that's just the deal. We're always in a hurry, get better, get better, get better. But the reality of the situation is, we've got 30 practices plus a lot of potential walkthroughs. We got plenty of time to get ready for the first game. So I, I, we did it at Texas Tech, and that's what I was telling. You know, obviously Chad and Tommy were there with me, but that's what I was telling the rest of the coaches. Just say it's it's not that bad a situation. How much of a shock to the body is it to 18, 19, 20 years? <laughs> enough done for Yeah. Well. Getting up early is the good thing about it is our older guys uh, with the previous staff, they practice real early in the morning, which I know put a damper on a lot of your all schedules here the first four days too. But um, really, Coach Stoops did it, so maybe not as many of y'all come. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But it was, uh, you know, I think it is a little bit of a shock to the system. Now, what we did, and I thought uh, Coach Edmond and Coach Corum did a really good job of this, is they kind of prepared their bodies for it at the, at the, end, of the, at the end of the summer. Um, a lot of the, the team runs – or the team workouts started at the same time we were going to practice. So kind of got them, got them prepped for that. Have any of those quarterbacks done anything in these first few days that was different than you saw in the spring? Um, dramatically different, I should say, that, that has changed at all how you, how you view them? Well, I think if you look at them individually, okay, and, and really what I was ex – and, and what I really wanted to see from the end of, the, end of April, from the spring game, until when we started on Monday was how much better they improved fundamentally because I gave them a lot of things to work on. You know, you know, I'll go through each of them individually and kind of give you one little tidbit is I think Reese Phillips has improved his arm strength. That's something that, that jumps out to me. Um, I think Patrick Tolles is – he still has a work to do in this, but he is improving his ability to get the ball out on quick game faster. Uh, Drew Barker has made less mental mistakes than he made – uh, during the spring, even in the last week of the spring practice. And then Maxwell has shown the ability um, to, to throw the ball effectively down the middle. Now, he's still got to be able to throw it outside the, to the numbers to outside, but he's, thrown the, he's shown the ability coming off surgery to throw the ball effectively down the middle. You, know, you guys said almost every, every day we talked to you last year that you're waiting for somebody to take the reins on that uh -huh. position. Is there a chance that doesn't happen with this group? No, I think it will. I actually will. I do, Jen. I think it'll happen, and I think it'll happen. We're going to start getting into more 11 on 11 work, um, and, and I do anticipate it happening. The good thing is, and I, and I know y'all are tired of hearing me. Y'all been on the banquet circuit with me and all that. Is we are going to be better at that position. You know, we we're going to be significantly better at that position we were last year, and and a lot of that has to do with year two in the system. A lot of it has to do with we're going to be better around them at running back. Our O line's matured. Everybody's back. Um, we're going to be more talented at receiver. We still have a little bit of ways to go at that position, but we're going to be more talented, and they're going to be fundamentally more sound. You know, what, do you, what do you mean when you, on your quarterbacks when you say you're going to turn up the heat on them? Well, what, what we've done is basically is v verbally I've challenged them every day in certain areas, okay? And, and I'm, I'm coaching them harder earlier in camp to perform at game level. And that's – I'm asking them to make quicker decisions – you know, we've put in a little bit more third down training and some of that stuff. 
um, early in camp. But it's more of me placing pressure on them. Then I, and and I'm, in the spring, I took this approach. Hey, we're going to have fun. We're going to enjoy this. And focus on getting better. You individually getting better. That's what we focused on. Now I'm telling them, hey, we're looking for a guy to win the job. Go win the job. You know, and everything that you do during the course of a practice is getting judged. So, yeah, you better have fun with it, but understand that we are keeping score. You know, how many running backs you have? Now right? that's kind of what that's kind of the label that's put on it. You know, I, I don't know. I think all the coaches within this offensive family, um, I think it kind of it got labeled that back in the ninety six or ninety seven or so, and and all the coaches that are in this family still use that. Um, I think if you look at it, you know, the offensive guys that are in this system. I think everybody now is putting a premium on running the ball. You know, I talked to Tom Leach earlier today on his radio show, and and I really believe this, and it said a lot. But in this league, to win, to win big, to win like we want to, is you've got to be able to successfully run the ball when they know you're running it, and you've got to be able to stop the run. Um, and we ran the ball effectively at times last year, but not so much when they knew we were going to run it. And we've got to get better at that. I do like our depth at running back. JoJo and Braylon picked up right where they did at the end of spring. Those guys, I'm really pleased with them. Josh Clemens, if, if we can keep him healthy, I'm excited about it. He's going to be a really a load. And for for second level def, second level defenders to tackle, I mean he's a big strong kid. You'll see that today when you see him. Um, and the two the two young kids have a ways to go. You know Stanley is uh, is really electric with the ball. You know uh, he's got to get a whole lot more detail oriented. Mikkel has made a big jump, really matured, changed his body. Um, I'm excited. He gives us you know along with Josh, he gives us another big kid. Yeah, really smart kid, uh, great, great character kid. He's going to be what we want at that position, okay? Is he right now? Probably not. You know, he may be a guy that, that probably needs a red shirt. He probably will tell you that. Um, but he's long. He runs well. Um, he's eager. I think he loves to play, which I think is, is, is always the most important thing when, when I'm judging guys. Um, that's the hardest spot to learn. What we're asking, you know, Daryl Long, Stephen Borden, Ronnie Shields at that position, it's the hardest thing to learn because they got to understand what they got to know what to do as a slot receiver, as a fullback, and as a tight end. So, you know, he's learning. He's learning, but I do think I do like his skill set. Well, I, I, I think it's too early to tell. I think um, I think that'll be probably a question a couple weeks down, down the line. How important is the play of your second year Juco players like Borden and Blue? Yeah, well, it's going to be important, you know. I think Javis is is in line to make a big jump just because he's, he's there's going to be less thinking. He's fast. He didn't always play as fast as he really is last year. Just because, yeah, think about it. He had his first practice the first week of August, and then we played, you know, and 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 that is tough. So I think you'll see a jump in him. You know, I wish he could have gone through spring, but that you know that's part of it. Borden is a guy that. Really, one of the one of the objectives for me coming out of spring or coming coming in out of fall camp, you know, I call it fall camp. Really, first couple of weeks is finding what he's best at. You know, let's use him the most effective. Is he the most effective as a fullback, not inline tight end, or a slot receiver? And let's find because he's got a really good skill set. He can run. He's big. You know, he's strong. And I've got to put him in, in positions where he can be successful. You said after the spring that the running backs had a ninety percent catch rate, which. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we want everybody to have, Jen. They had, they were up, they were higher than that. Actually, they were higher than that. But go on, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. How much could they, you know, how much could they be a part of this air raid? Club? Well, they need to be. There's no question because if you look at it, they're they're some of our more more talented kids, and we've got to get them involved in the pass game. And that's been a huge emphasis with the quarterbacks. Is you know we've got your running back should be your best friend in your pass in your pass game, okay? Because if if anything in the pocket breaks down, or if they do a good job covering your your primary combination, you've got to be able to find your running backs. And you look at teams that are really successful passing the ball. You can look at what we did at Texas Tech or like what any of the top passing teams are doing in the country. Their running backs always have a lot of receptions, and they always break the first tackle, whether it's they make somebody miss or they run through an arm tackle. You mentioned through making your mistakes and your wasn't strength. How did he benefit from, from kind of going through? Well, I think it's huge. I think not only for Drew, but if you look at the guys on offense that we had that went through spring, um, you look at Drew Barker, who able to go through spring all summer. 
you know, he's really matured. He has a much better understanding, not only what we're doing on offense, but how defenses are trying to defend us. Um, Mikel Horton, being here in the spring, you know, going through some growing pains. There were some tough times for him in the spring because he struggled at times, you know. But he was able to go through summer again. And I've talked about this a lot. The new rules were hugely beneficial where we could meet with those guys a little bit each week. Um, but he was able to learn what to do. Now he's less in a learning mode, more in a detailed technique mode. And the same could, like Thaddeus Snodgrass has made as big a jump in this first week of, of practice as anybody we've had. I'm talking about from where he left the spring, because he, he didn't perform that well in the spring game. Okay. But he's really studied. He's worked hard on his body, worked out hard on his route technique, all those things, and he's made a big jump here in the first week of practice. Um, and TV and TV Williams is a really football smart kid, and you know, and he 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 had a good feeling what we were doing in the spring, and that's carried over this fall. What do you expect to get out of uh, Dorian Baker and Garrett Johnson the receiver position? Well, uh, we're going to need those receivers to come in and play. You know, um, Garrett started off a little slow, had a really good practice on Wednesday. Uh, he's a guy that that'll play in the slot for us. Could play outside, but probably we need him more as a number in the slot. Um, got a, was really well coached in high school. He's got a good feel for the game. Knows how to play the receiver position. Um, he's quick. Gets in and out of his breaks really well. Has ability to make a play after the catch. Um, Dorian Baker and Blake Bone both are big guys. You know, and we 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 lacked length, and that was one of the main priorities in recruiting. Um, and it will be and it will be a main priority going going forward is we need length because everybody can run in this league. Everybody runs well. The, every defensive back we're going to play in this league runs well, but everybody doesn't have six three or above playing corner. So, and you can make a lot of those a lot of those tie ball situations goes to the bigger guy. So Dorian Baker's been impressive. I think Coach Stoops hit on that too. He's been impressive. Uh, the first week, and he's put himself in a position to compete for playing time. And the same can be said for Garrett and Blake. What about a guy like Cunningham who has size but didn't play last season as he? Yeah, he's improved. He's improved. I think this competition has been really good for him. You know, and and I like he he was really effective. He did a nice job in the spring. Got better. Um, he's done a nice job academically, bouncing back from where he missed last year. Um, he's getting pushed. We need him. We need him. He's a guy that we really need to step up in this camp and be able to make plays and give us snaps at that position. As an offensive coordinator, would you rather not see Tim in the three kicks or punt? Well, I, it, this is this is I, I'm I'm good with it because field position is a huge part of the game, and we feel like he's one of our most skilled athletes. He's if not the best, one of our best guys with the ball in his hands. Um, and if you look at statistically, if you can steal a first down on the kickoff return team, or you can steal a first down on the punt team. Our punt return team. That's a huge advantage in this game. Yes. Well, I, th I think it's probably a little too early, you know, because we've only had one really padded practice so far. Um, I think Tevin Eatman is is more comfortable at tackle than maybe I, than I thought he was. He's got, he had 15 practices in the spring, and um, I think he could be a legitimate option for us there. And then Kyle Meadows really benefited from his redshirt year. I'm excited to see how he progress, progresses over the next two weeks. He's a guy that we really need to come and, and, and make an impact. What about Bidette and Montgomery? Where do they stand right now? Bidette's coming back from his injury. He's been practicing. Um, he is, uh, I think, mentally and just understanding how to play the game night and day uh, ahead of where he was last year. And, and that's really – I've spent – you know, the last day or two, I've really watched some some video of some of opponents that will play this year, and and just watching our game over again, um, and and just watching Jeff this week in practice, and then comparing that to where he was last year, just way way ahead, much further along from a mental standpoint of how to get open on routes and how to win on leverage, those type of things. So pleased with his progress. Um, Alex uh, is yet to practice, and we're we're you know we have a whole lot of trust in our medical medical people and we always make medical decisions based on you know what's good for the team but more importantly on individual basis what's best for that kid and we're not going to put him in the fire until he's ready and and he's still going through that rehab process you know lots been made on on ACL injuries I still um, I, I really believe they're year-long injuries you know from from post-op now some guys come back earlier and you're in a position where you get released but mentally physically I think it really takes a year and um, I think he's probably ahead of that curve a little bit but we're being cautious with him. He's not a bit number one at that wide receiver spot on the spring depth chart. Who's sort of taken over that position while you're waiting for him to recover? It's been my committee a little bit. I think we're waiting for somebody to jump up and take that. 
you know, we can always play the tight end spot there too. You know, so Borden, Stephen Borden and Ronnie Shields are getting some reps there. Uh, playing Garrett Johnson. Cameron Fogel is a kid that, that walked on from Connor High School, was Drew's leading receiver when Drew was a junior. Um, he's, he's done really well in fall camp so far. He, he's a potential option there. We could always um, – DeMarco's a guy that's really flexible that has a good understanding of what we're doing at all those spots, and we can move some guys around. Yeah, well, what area would you like to see the most improvement from now until that opener? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this, and, and I hope this answers your question, is really what my three – what our three goals as an offensive staff is for our, for our unit is, is, number one, improve our tempo. You know, and I've got a saying that right now that's tempo above all. So we want to improve our tempo first. Secondly, we've got to get fundamentally, fundamentally better at each position group and then as an individual player. And the third thing is we've got to develop a mentality. We've got to have a more offensive mentality. We've got to be able to overcome adversity. We've got to expect to get – to convert third downs. We've got to expect to score touchdowns in the red zone. Okay, so those are our three three goals. If you want to break it down a little bit further, um, I think one of the key things for us um, moving forward, I, or, there's a couple things. And because so when I look at it, how can we make big jumps statistically? And if you make big jumps statistically, you're going you're gonna to change the outcome of games. Is the two givens are, are holding on the ball, which is something we did a really good job of last year, and we emphasize that on a daily basis. I think that's, I think that's a coaching. Um, and then penalties. We've got, we need to reduce our penalties, you know, especially unforced error penalties, procedure penalties, those type of things, delay games, anything like that. Um, so those are givens. And then what we've got to do is we've got to be better on first down. Drive starters and first down. First play of the drive. If you go back and, and kind of look through, through – um, my career, our staff's career as, uh, as an offense coordinator, if if we've had if we've gotten a first down in our initial our initial uh, drive, if we've gotten that first down, we've been pretty successful. So I want to see us be much better on drive starters, and then much better uh, overall first downs. Because last year we weren't very good on third down, and that's the truth. But a lot of that was due to us not being very good on first down. You know, most teams aren't going to be very good at third and seven or longer. Um, and, we, and hindrance, what do you mean? Like is prevent, okay, not getting first downs. You've got to get, you've got to get the initial first down to play fast. And that's what, that's what happened to us last year. We, we weren't getting first downs. So then you can't, you can't just say, okay, hey, I'm going to play fast regardless. Because if you do that, then you just continually put your defense in bad situations. Especially if you're not very good. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so we, uh, so now we're better. I think we got more skill. We got a better understanding what to do. But the important part is we've got to get we've got to get a fir the initial first down. Once you do that, you can get the defense on their heels. You said you regretted a little bit last year, you know, trying to over maybe overcompensate for some of the lack mm -hmm. of talent with tinkering and trying to maybe get, uh, out scheme some people or trick people. Mm -hmm. How much more will this be able to look like the offense that people know have seen you run? Yeah, well, it'll be close, but I think it's also important in. You know, and I've got that question a bunch, and the more I think about it, I think it's important. We will look closer. We won't look exactly the same, but it's also important to, to understand that offenses must evolve. We must evolve. You know, we were great in 2012 at Texas Tech. That's, that's true. But, you know, if we did the exact same thing in 2014, I'm not sure it would be as, as successful because the defenses have evolved. So we've got to continually evolve. Um, but I do feel like – you know, right now, and what I've talked, what I talked about in the spring, and what after going back and really looking at everything that we did over December and January, we tried to out scheme people and overcompensate for areas where we were maybe less talented or didn't have the depth. Um, and if I had to do it over again, I think I'd just go back and, and really focus on tempo and fundamentals, and and that's kind of where we're at. You know, those those goals I gave John, those were one and two. two All right. Two one is uh. Last year, every 64 played the game. Don't remind me, Lonnie. You get to it. Well, I think, and, 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 and Tom Leach asked me this not too long ago. I think goal wise, I think we'll start off with seven, around 75. And like in a perfect world, I think 80 to plus is what, what we want at the end of the day. But I think you got you to gotta set goals. So 64, hey, that's, the, that's your starting point. At least we, I don't like it, but at least I know where our starting point is. So I think we need to get 75 plus. 
you know here's what and if you look basically we were low okay but it comes down to this we've got to convert third downs which I already said goes a lot into how you perform on first down. We've got to con convert third downs, okay, which we'll be better at. We'll, we, will, we will be better at it, okay. And then defensively, they've got to get off the field on third down. So let's say that, that we convert two more third downs a game and the defense makes two more stops on third down. That's four more sets of downs, you know, so 12 plays in a minimum. The second part of that, yes. The, the over 12-game 12 12 schedule. If you broke it down as to, as to basically how many points you got to average for a game to have a winning season. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked at it. That's, a, that's, an interesting, uh, that's an interesting question. I can go look at our stat software and I'll be able to give you a better answer. So I might hit, you, you might hit me up later in the week on that, or beginning of next week. But I've looked at a lot of stats, but I haven't looked at that one. Have you had much experience yet sending your running back to the Cup of Bill against Matt Elam? What challenge will he eventually? He's getting, he's getting better. He's, he's a load up front. You know what we try to do is really run him side to side, and then maybe try to hit up in the middle. <laughs> but we haven't we haven't gone against him a ton yet. But he is he's really big. He's really big. He's got a lot of football savvy about him too. I think that goes kind of people look at his size, and that's the first thing they talk about. But he he's got a lot of football savviness about him. Everybody talks about Bud and Darius. Are there any defensive guys that are causing you guys trouble, or that you have to account for right now? I think AJ Stamps has had a really good first first week. He sticks out. We're definitely better at corner. This from a technique and depth standpoint, they can run more guys out there. Um, Jason Hatch, Hatcher is an issue in pass protection too. You know, he kind of gets overshadowed. Um, Josh Josh Force is a guy I think's improved. He, his length at linebacker causes problems. Gets his hands on a lot of balls. He can cover a lot of ground. So those would be some guys that that jump out to me. Neil, how does Zach West? Work? Zach. Yeah, Zach, Zach's doing better. He, he knows. He, that, was, that was a huge emphasis for us is we needed to get better at that spot. We didn't play in the interior of the O-line, center and two guards. We didn't play as well as we needed to um, last year. And the good thing is we've got most of those guys back. You know, at center, I think John Toth is really picked up exactly. He was our most improved player. If not Tolls, then he was the most improved player on offense in the spring. Um, he's put on weight and been able to hold it. I think he's around 305. I don't know exactly what he is on the roster, but that's that's where he's you know about. And he's he's doing a much better job. He'll be able to hold that line and get movement at the point of attack, which is very important. And then the two guards, Zach, you know, he's got still – I mean, we've got some guys, Cole Mosier and, and Nick Haynes, those guys are pushing him for the job. Now he's still he's still there. And he's, his, biggest, his biggest issue last year was, was lateral movement, you know. Uh, when defensive linemen would move and he got matched up against a defensive end, he had issues. And he's really worked over the last nine, ten months to, to correct that. And, and I think he has. I think he'll be a better player. But he's got to continue to come on. Okay, all right. Thank you all. Okay, guys. I'm going to hang here for just a minute um, due to the weather. And I think we're going to do a team photo. I'll do it. And then they're going to call me and we're going to – yeah, that doesn't right. sound good. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go over to another field house together as a team. Together? Yeah. Can we all hold hands? Yeah. We need a buddy, buddy, Yeah. <laughs>